and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at audio codes and analyzing them in media tanks. Audio codes are another part of the media language section of the conceptual framework behind the Media Studies A-level. Audio codes are, as the name suggests, exclusive to audiovisual media. So when you're analysing a media text, there's a couple of things that you can have a look at and consider. And I'm just going to go through a short selection of those today, just to provide you with a little bit of an introduction. The first couple of key terms you need to be aware of are diegetic and non-diegetic sound. Diegetic sound is sound that's part of the mise-en-scene. What we mean by mise-en-scene is the picture of the scene. So for example, a telephone ringing or a gunshot being fired or a car pulling up, these are all sounds that the characters within the scene would hear. Non-diegetic sound, by contrast, is sound that is obviously added in post-production and is sound that the characters in a scene would not hear. Remember, diegetic sounds can be added in post-production, but non-diegetic sounds are characterised by the fact that the characters in the scene would not be able to hear them. Things like backing tracks or film scores are examples of non-diegetic sound. Now we've got the difference between the two of those, let's go through a few of the things that we can look out for. The most obvious audio code to look for is dialogue. Dialogue establishes characters, relationships and plot points and narrative. As well as listening to what the characters say, it's important to listen to how they say it. And this applies to both fictional and non-fictional media texts. So, for example, the presenters of Radio 1's Breakfast Show are going to talk in a very different way to the presenters on Newsnight because they're targeting a different audience and they need to establish a different mode of address. The Radio 1 Breakfast Show is designed to entertain people. It's designed to be funny, fast-paced and accessible. You're meant to relate to it as you're listening. On Newsnight, it's important that the presenters sound like they know what they're talking about. The nature of the programme means that an audience will more likely have a political view or be watching because they are already aware of or have formed an opinion about something that will be in the programme. So it's important for them that their lexis or the language they use is that bit more formal and suggests their expertise in the topic being discussed. Sound effects are another audio code worth mentioning. Sound effects support the action of a scene and can add to it and enhance it in terms of genre as well. For example, in the horror film, you could hear the wind howling, you could hear doors creaking, you can hear people slowly climbing up the stairs. These things can be enhanced in post-production to emphasize them to an audience and to link them more closely with the genre. Music is a really important audio code and, and kind of an obvious one, really. And the choice of music can completely change the way that an audience views a scene. If you think about any scary film you have ever seen, if you take the backing track away from it, it's not going to seem as scary. In popular superhero franchise films, when the superhero gets ready to fight the final battle, you expect there to be epic, non-diegetic music behind them. If there isn't, or if the music does not fit the genre, then it wouldn't work, we wouldn't get the same response. And the wonderful thing about non-diegetic music is that quite often we don't truly register it. We'd register it if it was wrong and if it didn't fit, but actually we just let it tie in with the whole scene. We know that the characters in the scene can't hear the music, but we suspend our disbelief because it adds to the enjoyment for us. Another way sound effects can be used is contrapuntal music. This is where you have a scene and the non-diegetic music or the backing track in this case would contrast with it. So you could have a really calm and happy scene with really tense music and that can add tension because you get the feeling that something might be about to happen. Contrastingly, you could have a really violent scene and you could have some contrasting happy music playing over the top. The opening scene with Baby Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, where he's running around and he's listening to the music from the tape player, is a really good example of this and it adds a little bit of humour and sets the tone of the film. You get the feeling right from the start that this isn't your traditional action film. Another example of non-diegetic sound that is used in a wide variety of ways is voiceovers. Voiceovers give us more information, it can fill us in on bits of narrative that we may not pick up on simply by watching the film itself. And once again, the lexis or the language being used can greatly determine the audience's perception of the product being shown, whether that be a narrative of a film or a product in advertisement. That's pretty much it for the selection of audio codes we're discussing today. Just one final tip. It's worth remembering that when you're discussing audio codes in your analysis, be specific. Refer to pace, 
refer to the type of instruments if you can. If it's a particular well-known song, as is often the case, if it's a particular well-known song, then try and name the song if you can and consider the connotations of using that particular song. Remember, we want to move beyond just stating what something is. We want to think about why it's being used and the effect it has. So rather than thinking about the music just being loud, think about the type of music that is loud, why it's loud and the effect that it has on the audience as a result of being loud at that point in the narrative. So that's it for audio codes, I hope you found this useful and if you are taking media studies and you want a particular video to be made then please leave a comment down below with your suggestions. There are more videos in this Crash Course series that are going up regularly so, so in order to stay up to date with them hit the subscribe button for all things film and media related. That's it from me, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.